right, you're good. Okay, so this is um, this is a discussion of the aldosterone, the renin angiotensin aldosterone mechanism in the kidney um, for Unit Two's uh, exam and for the endocrine system, Chapter Fifteen. Uh, this this is a um, model showing the kidney, and the kidney has got uh, it's made up of an outer cortical region. This is the cortex. Uh, this is the medulla. These are the medullary pyramids from within. And if you look at one of those blown up, that's what we have here. This is the outer cortex, and the cortex is where you find uh, the over one million uh, filtering units, or uh, the renal corpuscle and the renal tubules that make up the nephron of the kidney. Um, within the kidney, uh, you have also these systems of tubules that are using high, uh, osmotic pressure, outside versus in, to dictate the movement and to control the movement, uh, and what's referred to as counter current exchange. Uh, of certain ions and water in and out. And notice that each, each of these tubules in the medulla are surrounded by bl blood vessels. This is called the vasa recta. Blood vessels out here, or up here in the cortex, are called the paratubular capillaries. Um, the start of the, the beginning of these nephrons, or filtering units, is what's referred to as the renal corpuscle. This corpuscle, the C-shaped structure, um, is going to surround the um, glomerulus. And if we look here, that's what this is blown up. This is one renal corpuscle. Uh, and also what's referred to as the uh, JG apparatus. Um, this JG apparatus we'll talk about in just a moment. So uh, blood comes into these filtering units, into the glomerulus. Under hydrostatic pressure, it overcomes osmotic pressure that's in the tubule already that's resisting it and filtration of the blood occurs and we get rid of waste and we also get rid of an abundance of things that we need uh, to stay in the blood. And so um, if something goes into these tubules that we need back, the movement of a substance from the tubule into these blood vessels here is called tubular reabsorption. The movement of something from the blood vessel back into the tubule is called tubular secretion. Okay, so when, um, if we look at this in, uh, with regard to uh, hormone levels and to the release of hormones by the endocrine system, the collecting duct, this large structure right here, is what collects all filtrate that comes in that's uh, finished in its uh, filtration process. It feeds into this collecting duct, and then ultimately the, the collecting duct will allow that, uh, to, that filtrate to move out of the body through this papilla into these calyces right here, and the calyces will lead into the renal pelvis and out through the ureter into the urinary bladder, and everything that's in that would be lost. If we lose too much water that way, then the loss of water leads to dehydration, and dehydration uh, is going to be picked up by, or the, the presence of dehydration or the lack of water in our body would be detected by the hypothalamus. It's our thirst detector. And so the hypothalamus w uh, would respond to this dehydration by sending out first from the superoptic nucleus within it uh, the ADH hormone. And ADH is a neurohormone that's going to be released into the blood um, from the pituocytes of the posterior pituitary and produced above it in the hypothalamus, like I said. And as it is released, it will come out and it will target this collecting duct. Um, if we've lost too much water and the filtrate um, that is left uh, dehydrates us, um, we would then target the walls of this collecting duct and the ADH uh, hormone would come here, it would, it would influence uh, bringing in uh, ald um, sorry, uh, aquaporins, which would allow this wall to become permeable and water leaves this tubule and doesn't leave the body as a result, moving into this interstitial fluid around these blood vessels. Um, if that's the case, then uh, you would have a hormonal response, uh, uh, sorry, a humoral response also uh, that's coupled with this that targets this gland right here. The, the gland that sits on top of the kidney is the adrenal gland. The adrenal gland is made up of three outer layers which are cortical, and just like the kidney with its cortex and medulla inside, this is the medulla at the center of the uh, adrenal gland, and the outer portion is called the cortex. The, there are three zones in the outer part of the cortex, and that outer zone is called the zona glomerulosa. It is uh, this specific zone that is targeted for the release of aldosterone. Now, aldosterone is not going to be released through normal hormonal action like we, like we uh, learned when we learned the, the other three zones, or the other two zones within the, uh, within the cortex. Those are released by CRH from the ventral hypothalamus, followed by ACTH from the anterior pituitary, which then targets the adrenal cortex to release uh, their gluco and gonadocorticoids. However, mineral corticoids, although they could be released this way, aren't usually. They would be released because of this apparatus. 
as, uh, as filtrate moves through this nephron, uh, the beginning of this process is here in the afferent arterial, and the afferent arterial has stretch receptors in its wall that detect blood pressure. If there is no stretch in these, in these stretch receptors, then the baroreceptor will release a chemical, or an enzyme, that's referred to as renin, and renin will begin a cascade of enzymatic events that, uh, it, that are referred to as the renin-angiotensin-aldosterone uh, system. And that release will ultimately result in uh, aldosterone being released. That We'll talk about that in a moment. The other thing that's right here, which is the end of these tubes, notice the tubes come out, they go down into the loop and back up, and they pass by where they started. That's what this is. This is the distal convoluted tubule where aldosterone targets. Uh, in that distal tubule, right when it comes next to this afferent arterial that had renin release already, uh, you have the ability, these cells right here are chemoreceptive cells, modified cells that detect the presence and amount of uh, sodium. And so if sodium is in low amount, uh, that, is, that is also an indicator that blood pressure is low, and these will chemically influence these cells that, uh, to release renin also. So a low concentration of sodium or lack of stretch in the wall of the afferent vessel in the JG apparatus results in renin release. Renin release ultimately targets the outer layer of the adrenal cortex to release aldosterone. When aldosterone arrives here in the bloodstream, notice it's going to be released here and then sent into the blood. It's picked up here and it will affect this area. Um, it's going to target the distal convoluted tubule to move sodium. So sodium that is present in the tubule will leave the tubule and move into these blood vessels and the water that was sitting out there waiting uh, will now move it back into the blood vessel as well. And so blood pressure that went down because blood volume loss is now returned and blood volume increases because sodium sucks and it moves water with it into the blood and brings blood volume back up and as a result blood pressure rises as from these two in that mechanism. Study.